Hell no, everyone! This is Stardust ADV, rider of classic dad bikes and crasher of rolling fields. Today, I bring you the long-awaited 3,000-mile owner review of my over 40,000-mile 2004 Harley-Davidson FX STDI Deuce. So it's cold outside, so I'm bringing you my recorded disembodied voice of the present and showing you some footage uh, from the past. A little over a year ago, I purchased a 2004 Harley-Davidson Softail Deuce of 39,000 miles on the clock with the intent of using it as my touring bike. As a disclaimer, I actually put a little over 4,000 miles on it, but my past review of my uh, of Restrom and it was my first ever video on the channel, and it set the series name as a 3,000 mile owner review. Hey, who knows? Maybe we'll even throw my Forerunner in here, even though I've put over 33,000 miles on it since I got it. So I already featured this bike in my Let's Ride and Review series, where I um, told you a bit about the bike as I rode it, original thoughts and opinions, and did a detailed breakdown of its specs. But this review, I'll try to be a little more in-depth and a little more personal about all my experiences I've had with the bike since I got it, since... I was actually able to kind of take notes and gather my thoughts before recording this. So we'll start specs. The Deuce is powered by Harley's 88 cubic inch, around 1450-ish cc, air-cooled V-twin that makes 68-ish horsepower and 78-ish foot-pounds of torque. Weighs in around 670 pounds wet for a stock one, but since mine has the bags and the windshield and the crash bars, it probably weighs more around 700. So it's not exactly a powerhouse, but power is definitely not the reason you're buying one of these older model Harleys. I purchased mine to be my company touring bike. My rolling couch made from pure American steel. But mine did come with a power commander and a screaming eagle exhaust. So mine might be a little faster. It definitely is louder. Because, you know, who wants speed when you have a Harley? You got a Harley so you can wake up your neighbors every time you get up in the morning to ride to work. That's that's the real reason you got it. You know, so price-wise, it cost me around $6,000 out the door at my local Harley dealer, including a full inspection, changing all the fluids, and a full tank of gas. And then I got to ride at home which was actually a really windy day I rode at home and it was dark and there was a random point where it rained a little bit on the freeway. I don't know if it was just like a little baby cloud because I went through it really fast. Yeah, that kind of revealed to me almost immediately that the bike is almost unaffected by the wind. So that was nice. <laughs> yeah, pretty much as soon as I got at home though, I began pl planning trips to go visit family that I have living around Arizona. Uh, I even rode it on a day with 40 mile per hour gusts. Yeah, the wind does not make her budge at all. The bike just does not want to move when the wind blasts it. It's pretty much immovable. Im like immovable. Now, unlike my taller V-Strum that I have to basically ride at a 45 degree angle the entire time if it's a really windy day. So the seating position is nice. The reach to bars, the floorboard position, Everything actually found to fit me really well. The seat I have on there is aftermarket, and it's definitely more of a style seat, but its position is still nice. It's not like super soft, but it's not super hard either, and honestly, for a longer trip, I prefer it. Perfect seat for me, definitely not replacing the seat. Uh, there's a few other mods that the person put on, like the previous owner also installed crash bars of highway pegs, and oh man, those highway pegs have been God's saving grace when I'm on a long trip and I need to stretch. They've been so nice. Uh, the person also did some, uh, like, flame aesthetic mods. They're subtle, but they're there. Like, the levers for, like, the brake lever and the clutch. Also, the shifter lever are flames. The shift bar itself that goes from the shift lever to the transmission is somehow also a flame. And there's a little fire bell <laughs> that's underneath the bike. I do plan on replacing most of that. But the only thing from a functionality standpoint that I won't complain about that the previous owner did to the bike are the chrome grips. Like, sure, they look all nice and shiny, but functionality-wise, they're not the grippiest grips. If it's a cold day, the grips get really cold and are literally the opposite of a heated grip. They will freeze your hands. I've had my hands go numb and turn purple when riding at like 42, 43-ish degrees. So... 
I had to get, I have to, if I, I had to write, <laughs> I have to wear my winter gloves if it's remotely chilly. And in the summer, oh, those chrome grips get scorching hot. Yeah, not really something I want. I'm definitely going to replace them. I actually just plan on replacing with heated grips because I can turn them off when it's hot and when it's cold, I can turn them on and keep my hands all warm. And the previous owner also did add this like cute little like watch like clock on the handlebars. And I've actually been kind of enjoying it up until the point where, you know, the battery died. I have to get it replaced. It's like, because there's no clock on the dashboard for stock deuce, I've actually been using it quite a bit while I ride. So my deuce actually was equipped with the um, factory reduced saddlebags, which I believe were an optional extra for the time. And I found they provide adequate storage, but, and I'm not sure if this is a problem with the stock pipes too, but with the Screaming Eagle exhaust they installed, um, there's a clearance issue for the saddlebag. The top pipe in the two and the two system is rubbing the bottom of the saddlebag. So the previous owner installed some heat, heat tape, which barely squeezes between the pipe and the bag. And it makes anything in that bag get really warm. I straight up put a water bottle in there. Now a double walled thermos because I can't really put much else in there. But if I put the water bottle in there and put stuff on top, that works. But the bottle gets really hot. However, there was one time where I managed to use this to my advantage. I was eating a burrito on my way home from a trip. I got in a gas station that has some actually like really nice burritos. And I couldn't quite finish it. So I wrapped it up, put it in that bag, went home. When I got home, it was still warm. So there's a use for the pipe. Uh, the passenger foot peg on the right side is sticking between the two pipes. It does stick out, but I feel like the passenger has to be extra careful or it'll burn their heels on the upper pipe. So my plan is to get a two to one system that sweeps under the passenger peg and provides like another inch, inch and a half of clearance from the saddlebag. And that should fix all my issues there. So even though the saddlebags are a pretty decent size, I did add an Onyx day bag to the tail just for a little extra storage. I do love that bag and highly recommend it for anyone who needs extra storage for any reason. I'm also thinking about installing a swing arm bag and a little bag behind the windshield. The reason for the bag behind the windshield would be for the bike's registration and my sunglasses. Right now I have those in a pouch behind me that's actually on the aftermarket seat that was installed because it has a backrest for both rider and passenger and there's a pouch right on the rider backrest that currently contains the registration and my sunglasses. But it'd be more convenient to have all that in front of me rather than behind me. So yeah, storage on it has been great, especially for daily riding with the Honest bag I installed in the factory bags. I still want to expand it a little bit because this is my touring bike and I want to start doing some much longer trips. Maybe even I'll be able to bring some videos to you on touring this thing. That'd be nice, let me know. It also has a really low seat height. I mean, it's a cruiser. I think it's like between 25 and 27 inches, somewhere in there. And it's actually really balanced and easy to handle when it comes to a stop. For daily riding or in stop and go traffic, um, stop signs around neighborhoods, stop lights, all of that. Sometimes I'm really tired, I feel the weight a bit more than other times, but it never feels as heavy as I expect and it handles surprisingly well. I find it weirdly maneuverable in a parking lot. Also, it has a five gallon fuel tank and gets a little over 40 miles a gallon. I think I calculated mine around like 42, so I can get some pretty decent, like between 40 and 42, if that's what I get. But I get some pretty decent range out of the old soft tail. The poor bike has also been put through its paces in terrain that no Harley deserves to go on. I've put it for dirt roads. I even showed it on a mild dirt road in my Let's Ride video, but that's a very easy going dirt road. But it's been on more intense stuff out in the desert, visiting some family out there. Like right after a rainstorm, we had to wash his rock, like washed over the road. And it was rough, but <laughs> I mean, the thing did it. It just wasn't happy about doing it. And I'll bring us to the next section, which is actually the flaws of a deuce. Its suspension sucks and will basically crunch over every bump, so just imagine those rough roads of divots and everything everywhere. And it shakes a whole lot if it's at 85 miles per hour or above. I believe that's mostly because of it only having five gears in the gearbox. Speaking of the gearbox, it's actually really clunky. And when I first got the bike, I had a hard time finding neutral until I kind of got used to it. It literally clunks into place when you shift. Now I kind of like it, but it's technically not necessarily a good thing. Though, from what I can tell, a lot of these issues can be fixed on the aftermarket. So, maybe HD stands for half done, huh? Huh? Actually, the funny thing is that was actually a joke that I stole from the dealer guy who sold me the bike. The guy at the dealership sold me the bike, made that joke. And it was funny. And he was simply referring to how, how many mods he'd actually put on his 
Harley Davidson. <laughs> he felt like half the price was the bike and the other half was the mods I installed afterward. Like, yeah, so far this seems pretty accurate. If I actually look at the mods I want for the thing, they add up to almost the price I paid for the bike. But hey, on the bright side, I got it used. But it does bring me to another one of my favorite things about the bike is the aftermarket. Part of the reason I have such a list built up is because how much there is available for the thing. I actually cannot wait to show you all the stuff I'm planning to put on there. So stay tuned and subscribe to the channel to see what I do. I'm hoping to break the 100 sub mark. Despite not being the most refined machine, I love the fully analog feel and the beautiful styling of my deuce. I'm very pleased with everything that's giving me up to this point. I cannot wait for the snow to melt so I can start taking some road trips again. The bike is definitely more of an emotional purchase. Um, so I love the looks, I love the little potato potato sound the engine makes. I like the way the engine feels and rumbles beneath me. And I described the bike when riding it as the earth moving beneath you as your behemoth of a machine carries you toward your destination. Because when you're on that thing, it definitely feels like a behemoth. It makes my V-Shrum feel tiny. It makes my mom's Rebel feel like a mini bike. It's actually just, I love it. Also makes my dad's um, Bolt feel like a mini bike. As one comparison I did, my road his bolt and my soft tail and pretty much back to back on um, let's ride and review videos. The bolt felt really tiny to me after riding my soft tail so much. But no, I love it. I look forward to many, many more rides. I have lots of plans for the bike. Besides, I've only ever he overheated the bike once so far. So thank you for watching. Stardust ADV out.